three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, according to Twitch, we are streaming. Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, we do have a bit of an agenda today to continue from last time. We are still looking at, um, basically looking at eclipses from, lunar eclipses from Jupiter, but more generally uh, the concept of one uh, celestial body obscuring another. Um, and again, there is there are functions in uh, C Spice to deal with this, but these functions uh, require that you be sort of at the center of um, of, a, of an object, which of course is impossible. No one actually observes from the center of an object. Um, they are pretty good in the sense that they do allow for the observed objects to be uh, uh, ellipsoids, but unfortunately, the observing uh, object has to be a point, which is unrealistic. Okay, now last time um, I think I said um, more than um, okay. um, last time I um, hang on one second. Someone here in Discord is uh, telling me um, that I am I was of course live streaming somebody else. Uh, that is, I I do auto host, um, but now I'm not auto hosting. I am hosting myself, which I guess is kind of a different kind of auto hosting. Uh, in any case, uh, last time I believe I said that the uh, angular diameter or angular radius of a planet was the uh, planet's radius divided by the distance from uh, you to the center of the planet. That is, that is not correct. It is actually the arc sine. And we're going to see why here uh, using some diagrams. Um, and the general, the general um, it's really a very small difference most of the time because if you're far enough away from the object, uh, and the numbers are small enough, um, arc sine and arc tangent are very nearly identical, just like sine and tangent are very nearly identical um, when you're close to uh, theta equals zero degrees. So let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, here's the last diagram that we had. And I will go ahead and get rid of the random image. Wow, this was really big. Let's get it back down to a more reasonable size. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this and this. And I'm going to go ahead and replace this with another diagram that's going to show us why uh, arc sine is a better, uh, hopefully will show us why arc sine is a better choice. So let's go ahead and um, say graphics, start, and semicolon. And we'll start with a very simple, just a point that we're going to make blue for no compelling reason. And then a, um, we'll go ahead and use a, a circle. We could use a disk here. Uh, but we'll go ahead and make that at 1, 0, and with a, with a radius of 0.9. Now, if I've done this correctly, which the odds are pretty much a million to one against, we should see a, a, a dot and a nearby planet. Let's do this and see what happens. And we do, and that is actually pretty good. I want the planet to be a different color. Um, and we're going to show the wrong way first to do it, and then we'll see why that's incorrect, and then we'll show the right way to do it. So let me also go ahead and do a couple things here. We'll make the uh, planet red. We also want to point in the center of the uh, of the planet. And let's see, what else do we want? And yeah, let's just make sure that works. And then we're going to add the uh, the incorrect lines here in just a sec. Let's go ahead and do this. All right, fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and do the incorrect lines now, and we'll see how we got came up with the arc tangent. Um, and we'll go ahead and make the, those lines in black. Um, so we take a line from the origin one line from the origin to the top of the of the circle, which will be one, and re remember y does go up in this because we're using sort of a normal mathematical orientation, not the uh, screen graphics orientation where y goes down. So we'll do that, although I guess in this case it really wouldn't matter. Um, and then we'll draw in the other two lines, zero, zero to one, zero. And I think that I've made a mistake already by not putting these in additional braces. Um, so we'll do this, this, and then finally we'll do one that connects, um, yes, the, the, uh, the we're basically creating a triangle here. Uh, assuming I did this correctly, which again, odds are highly unlikely that I did. Let's take a look here real quick. Yep, messed something up. All right, and I think the comma is where I went wrong there. Um, and it's not what I wanted, obviously. 
I'm trying to figure out what I did wrong. And I think, of course, the y coordinate that I'm looking for is is 0 0.9, not not 1.9, because the uh, the y value of the red ball is centered at zero. Let's take a look here. Okay, so now this is the sort of incorrect view of the angular uh, diameter. Uh, in other words, we you know this angle here is not the angular diameter because you can see it cuts through here. But this is where you got the arc tangent value. This is where we would say that uh, you know we have the r is the opposite. Uh, this distance here, d, is the adjacent. And let me see if I can label them without breaking anything. Although if yesterday's uh, stream was any indication, I will not be able to do that. But let me just try it anyway. And I think it's actually text and then followed by what it is. But this, let me see if this even works before I do any others. Yes, and unfortunately because, um, because of the size of the text here, this is not going to work. Although I'm now sort of tempted to just make everything 100 times bigger. Um, so let me try that. And again, we had this problem yesterday with the text not being resizable. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. This doesn't work. We're just going to sort of deal with it and not, and you know, find another way to label our our points or not label them at all, whichever is easier. Okay. So what that does, if that doesn't work, we're giving up. And that actually did sort of work. So let me go ahead and put the O a little bit further to the right and down, just to get it a nice sort of a, a visibility there. Okay. That will either move too little or... Oh, actually, right, because I forgot we're now at a scale of 100, so we're going to say 1 minus 1. See what that does. I think we're going to go down a little. You know what? I don't really don't think we need to go right at all. I think we just need to go down a couple, so that way it'll be under the uh, under the blue dot. Okay, down a little bit further, and we're kind of cutting off the edge of it. I know, and I think we can fix that by moving it or. So it's hard to sort of tell with mathics what it's going to do exactly here. So there it is. I'm going to move it a little bit to the right, just to keep it in frame. And again, it's probably spending more time than it's worth. But you know what? It's my time. And it's actually your time too, but I don't care. And unfortunately, because I don't have the scale set quite correctly, it's going to keep doing this. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to have to use a plot range on this sucker. So, and we did see last time that plot range, and I want to make sure I get it all right. Yeah, plot range actually does sort of uh, change the formatting somehow. It shouldn't, but it does. So for the uh, y coordinate, we're going to say from minus 1 to um, 100. And I don't know if that's going to actually work. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't like that, because I think you have to give it both coordinates in mathematics. Mathematically, you can get away with just doing one. Here, I think you have to go for uh, for all of them. So let's see if that's any good. Oh, no, actually, I do know what's wrong. Sorry. Uh, this is a, this is an option, so it has to come after the, the graphics. So let's see if this works with... Uh, And I guess because we're actually using a uh, 90 degree rate, 90 element radius there, we can do this. And come on, adjacent, no adjacent, okay, so we don't want that. Um, yeah, I still, this probably still won't work, but let's see what, what happens. Yeah, like this. Um, I think you might have to do this. And honestly, I think I have to give both coordinates. I don't remember what I tried last time. It didn't work. Yeah, let's go ahead and get both coordinates here. And from the Y region, we're going from, I'm going to say 0 to 1. I'll say 0 to 100, even though that's a little bit too big. Um, so let's see what that does. 
Yes, and in fact, we need to go down a little bit further, and we need to go because we need to see the whole circle. But that's that we we're pretty good. In, we're in pretty good shape here. So we'll say minus one here to hundred, minus one to two hundred. Let's see what this does. And we can go a little bit further to the left to get that whole O in there. Um, so we can say minus five maybe. Now, of course, 200 really needs to be 180 because we're not going that far to the right. But that's actually okay. We kind of want that little bit of an extra, extra, extra padding there. Let's go ahead and do this. And there we go. Beautiful. Um, so we're now going to label um, this line as being length D. And then this length line is being length R. And then we can, uh, we then we and this is a right angle, but I don't know if we need to say that specifically. Well, we can call this point C, so let's go ahead and call that um, the red point, um, point C. And I think we found out we want to make our text same, same um, X value as our point, but four Y values lower. So we'll say uh, minus four. And what else do we want to do here? We wanted to label the line, the black line, as uh, as D, the distance between the center of the of the planet and the center of uh, the and the observer, and it's lowercase D, that's which is not the important part. Uh, and so this is going to be this is going to be 100. This is going to be uh, 50, and so we're going to say x of 50 and y of minus 4, and that's more than enough to try out just to see that this is all going to happen correctly. Working a lot better than last time, by the way. Okay, there it is, distance D point C, which I guess would actually look better in black, so I will go ahead and move that, um, even though it's referring to the red point. And then we want um, this to be called R, and so the middle of this is going to be X is going to equal uh, 100, and uh, we're going to probably move that to the right by 4, 100, and then 45, because it's actually going to go up to 90. Um, so 104.45. So let's see how that all falls out. Okay, not bad at all. So here you could see that um, if this diagram were accurate, which it's not, this angle here would be, the tangent would be the opposite over the adjacent, R over D not what's happening. And I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, point the name as well, and I will probably put that over, um, I will put that over the, uh, the, the label over the, uh, the, the point. Well, you got better today, by the way, I think. Um, for those of you who were here yesterday, you remember that I did not really have uh, a great deal of luck with this. So let's say point P. I'm sorry, the point will actually be right on top of it. Um, but the, the, the text will be here. So if this works, I'd be very impressed. Okay, and I think I can move point... I think maybe I could increase the padding slightly on OP and C from 4 to maybe 6. So we'll say a little bit more here. And let's see how that does. If this works, gorgeous. Okay, so this is incorrect, but if it were correct, um, this would show you what the angular diameter is. And we're going to go ahead and do the correct version in just a second. Now, another uh, thing on my to-do list uh, was to set up mini Git on the VM without pushing remotely. So let me uh, let me right now show you. Ooh. Let me right now show you, and we'll go ahead and use a different screen for this over here. Um, my BC git alias basically well it pushes the current directory so you can re return to it. Uh, CDs to BC git adds commits up to there we're fine and then what it does after that is it pulls and it pushes to the remotes. Now um, we cannot actually push because we don't have the passwords here but everything up to that point and then pop D to get back where we were we should be able to do even on this VM without having to go to the main machine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create a new alias. That'll be right here. And 
to do local git stuff without pushing to remote. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and find the bc git alias, which is going to be up here. Copy it, call it bc git mini. Uh, git add git commit, and I think you can go as far as git pull minus v before you have to stop. You can't push the remotes because I don't have the password for the remotes here. So we will do this. We will source the aliases. And if you're wondering where I'm sourcing tilde aliases, I think that's just a pointer to uh, bc git aliases. So if I do this correctly, probably won't work by the way. Drum roll please. Um, not looking great at the moment. We'll give it another few seconds here. Uh, the only one I'm thinking is maybe git add dot is unhappy because of course we're on sshfs which means we are doing ssh for everything but it's it's over a local connection in fact it's over a a virtual network connection uh, which would be very quick um, but I'm beginning to suspect that git I don't know I don't know well we'll give it another 10 seconds and while we're doing that let me see if anyone's in the stream I don't think there is anyone watching as always, and there is not, at least not anyone that's showing up, and that are, that's close to 10 seconds. So let's do this, git add dot. Um, again, not very little happening here. I'm sort of surprised that it's taking this long, especially since the dot git directory is also right here. All right, if this doesn't work in another five seconds, I guess this is not going to work, and I will have to push from the uh, from the main machine. Um, and that's what I'll have to do. So apparently that was a, that was a failure. Um, I will really try it again to see if it works any better later. So now I'm pushing from the main machine. Went much faster. And three, two, one, we are done. That wasn't supposed to run, but cool. Okay, so, uh, so this here is it actually, I like this diagram, I want to keep it as G4. Uh, this is what it would be like if, if we had, um, if the arc tangent were correct. And it turns out what's actually going to be correct is the arc sine. This will not be the correct right angle. The right angle will be over here. But we'll see what that's like here in just a minute. And so for that we're going to go ahead and call it uh, G5. And again we'll just copy G4 to make G5. Um, and we do want to keep the blue point, the red circle, the red, the two points. Do we want to keep the third point? Um, actually, I don't think we need to keep P here, so we're going to get rid of P. Uh, we will keep the... which lines are we keeping? We're keeping uh, only the D line, only the only the line that goes from 0 to 0. The other lines are gone. Text O, text D, uh, text C is fine, but we're not going to be using R, and we're not going to be using P. Uh, now, God willing, this is still... Uh, gonna compile, so it, it's gonna still display something. And I got rid of the wrong line. Yay me! I'm a moron. Okay. So the one we want is actually from 0, zero to uh, 100. Uh, zero. And oh good, that actually is, that is, I think, the only change we needed to make. And so there you go. Okay, so now we still have this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the arc sign to be the correct, um, to be the correct angle that we actually need. Now, there's a few ways to do this I was thinking about. Um, there's, there's actually more than one way to do it. One is we could try to look to see uh, if we run a line of slope m from here through here, what will give us just one solution? Because what we want is the tangent line. Uh, so normally there would be zero, zero solutions if this line is fairly steep, or two solutions if it cuts through the circle twice. We want to find where there's exactly one, uh, one touching point. Uh, another way of doing this is just to compute the arc sine of uh, r over d in this case, because we know both, and just draw the line to be that arc sine. Um, and honestly, it's going to be more instructive, I think, to look at the different slopes of the lines and see if we can find out what uh, how to do that. 
Um, so we'll go ahead and do that over here, but we're actually going to use the command line mathix. Um, so what we're going to say here is, um, if you have a slope of line, if you have a line of slope m and it goes through zero, which happens to be our origin, which we chose intentionally to be the origin, uh, any point on the line can be represented by t comma m times t, uh, where t is the x value, m times t is the y value, and m is the slope of the line. And we know that all the points on the circle satisfy uh, distance from the um, r, the distance from the, from the center point is going to be r. And our center point here is, um, so let's see, so the distance, so we want to basically solve um, t m times t minus the distance from the center, which we'll call, I guess, c for the center, uh, and 0 on the y-axis. And I'm, I'm okay with that, because we do know that these things are lined up. And the reason we know that is, we, given two points in, in outer space and free space, we can always align them. We can always align our axes. So z and so zero and c are on a straight line, and also we can call that line the x-axis. In fact, we have more degrees of freedom here than we need, but we can always arrange our axes so that uh, o and c are, you know, they're always going to be aligned between them, and we can always call that line the x-axis, the positive x-axis. So that's okay. We, we can actually do more than that. We're not going to, though. Um, so what we have here is the distance between TMT and C0 is going to equal exactly um, the radius of, of the red circle, which we, again, can put in, but we won't for right now. And I'm going to see if we can just solve this in general. One issue here, of course, is what variables are we solving for? And there's going to be a whole bunch of them. What we're really concerned about here is when is there exactly one solution and when is oh, when is there two solutions? Um, and I won't use Windows 0 because we're getting the output of the Mathix server from there. I will use Window 1, uh, and we'll, we'll see what goes on there. So let's see what happens. Did not like that at all. Did not like that at all. Um, so let's solve it for the slope m. Didn't like that either. Okay. Um, now this you shouldn't have to do, but we can solve this like this. We could solve it for the square is equal to the square. Wow, it doesn't like that either. Okay. Uh, Mathematica would have handled this, but you know what? Let's just do this. Um, T squared, let's see. Um, we'll just do it ourselves. T minus C squared plus um, m times t squared, which is, of course, the whole thing squared, m times t minus 0 squared, just to be, you know, t minus c, m minus times t minus 0 squared, equal, equal r squared. So that's, that might be have a better solution. Uh, and they don't like that either, but let's just solve that for m. There we go. This is the kind of thing we're looking for here. Uh, and it is m goes to the negative square root of this thing over t, and m goes to the positive square root of that thing over t. So the, 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 the when m is, um, okay, I'm not sure that's what I wanted. Um, let's solve it for t instead. That's even worse. Wow. Um, C minus blah, 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 T to the C plus, blah, blah, blah. Okay, hang on. We're trying to find there's only one solution. The problem is here for M, uh, there's only one solution when um, uh, when this is zero, which actually maybe is correct. Um, the only problem is if that's zero, then the slope is zero, and I'm pretty sure that's not what we're looking for. Um, so this is actually probably more accurate here. T goes to this or this. Um, minus two, two, two. And then this becomes has to become zero. 
Uh, let's see. And I'm beginning to think that might be the same thing here. Um, yeah, but I, I'm pretty sure that having setting m to zero is not the correct solution here. Um, so I guess we could solve for c, but that's not really a variable, though we already know what c is. We know what r is. Uh, the two things we don't know are, uh, let's see, let's go back to our definition here. Uh, we don't know what m the slope is, and t is just going to be, uh, I guess we should say for any slope, we do want to solve for t. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go our, do our solution for t. Um, and we're going to go ahead and copy this back in because I want to, uh, I want to mess with this a little bit. That's not what I meant at all. Hang on one second here. That's what I meant. Hopefully we can do this. There we go. We'll put this in a comment to, because it fails. Um, and now we have this ugliness. So now we're going to start. Ma now we're going to start doing what we do a lot in Mathematica, and and also in Mathics now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and assign this to a variable, and then I want to sort of look at them individually, and uh, then we're going to look at them and see what the uh, what the diff what you know how we can set it so that it's uh, so that it's equal to so t eighteen oh seven one t goes to this t eighteen oh seven two goes to this um, so you can see that it's basically c plus or minus this quantity here this quantity here right here um, and it's fairly obvious this is one answer when we have this uh, equal to zero so what we want to do is take this value. And I'm cheating a little bit. You could, we could do more within Mathics itself, but we're going to do this. And we're going to solve that for m. What value of m gives us, um, makes this value 0? And ma Mathematic would not have a problem solving this. Let's see if this does. Um, OK, fantastic. R squared over. And it looks like these are two separate values. One, they are. Actually. Right, right, they are going to be two separate values because one is going to be the, uh, the positive hitting value. Uh, one second here. One's going to be the one that hits like this, and the other one's going to be the one that hits like that. We're going to only use the positive value because that's the only value we're actually interested in. But, okay, so the solution here is going to be um, square root of r squared. By the way, this might look very much unlike arc sine. But it turns out, well, we're going to show that it is arc sine. Uh, and it turns out that's going to be for a very strange, there's a, there's a relationship between arc tangent and arc sine. And this is effectively it. Uh, arc sine and, uh, you know, s uh, and arc tangent are related, just like sine and tangent are related. So why did I just copy the, that when I wanted to copy the solution? I want this. Okay, and that's not really something we, well, actually that is probably something we leave as is, but okay. So we have um, square root of r squared over c squared minus r squared. Uh, so that's the slope. Now, um, in our case, that will be, um, over c, c is I think just 1, right? Yeah. And it's the square root of that. So our slope is going to be, that's not a very nice number. In fact, it's such a not nice number, I want to, um, this is the slope squared, but I want to see what the square root. Wow, that's not a nice number either. OK, well, it is what it is, I guess. All right, so now we're going to intentionally screw something up. We're just going to uh, we're going to um, we're going to draw a line between zero zero and the slope, which we need to actually put up here because we're going to draw it. Um, now you know what? Let's keep this down here. We're going to move G five down a little bit. So let's do this, g5 equals this. We're just going to draw the line really long for right now. At some point, we're going to have to decide, um, you know, obviously that's the slope, but we don't know where the, the, ter the terminal point is. For right now, we're going to say 100, 
and 100 times slope. And if we're, if we're right, this should at least go through the... Um, mm, there. This should at least go through the, you know, give us sort of a, a, a tangent line. But it might be... Um, and there it is. It's gorgeous. It's our tangent line right there. Um, so now we should, of course, try to figure out what that tangent point is. We can't just keep going forever. But that I think we can do because we know that... Um, we know that, let's see, we have slope. So we need to know where um, the, the distance, let's see. We need to know the value of t such that the distance is, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So the distance is the correct, dis this is the correct distance for t. We have the correct distance for t. And let's, we can, what we can do here is we can actually use out 11 where we actually computed t. And I think this is the more positive value of t. Um, the negative value would probably also work. Um, given that, given that m goes to the slope here, now we really need to do more with this, but let's see. Okay, good. And we know that c is 1. Um, oh, and we know that r is 0.9. So doing this, we should get the, uh, yeah, there's the value of t we should be getting. Um, and I'm fairly confident this is going to be correct. This is going to be, okay, there's something wrong here because this number is way too small. <laughs> and, okay, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So... C is actually 100 and R is 90 because we, we upped our scale a lot there. So this actually is probably more correct here. T is 19 and uh, this is um, 19 times the slope. Now this is going to work and we're going to then... Okay, perfect. And now we're going to go ahead and... Um, draw the point, for we're going to call this point P, draw this and you'll see this is the right angle then here, this will become the right angle. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and label this R. Um, and then we might look at the, the uh, relation between arc tangent and arc sine. Okay, so we will go ahead and call, instead of, the, instead of doing this, we're just going to call this uh, TP for terminal point, and we'll just call this TP here, uh, instead of having to re redo it each time. Uh, and so we'll say 0 from the terminal point. And of course the reason I'm doing that is because I want to also uh, draw text there called P, which is... Um, okay, let's see here. I guess I want it to be above, so I'm going to be a little bit careful here. So the X coordinate stays the same, the Y coordinate we're going to increase by our, our perennial 6 is our padding. And again, we could have just put in, you know, 6 as a padding, uh, but let's see what else we want to do here. And we also want to draw a line from that point um, to the uh, to the center of the circle, which is the center of the planet, which is 100, 0, I think. So, let's see what this does. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and draw an R, which needs to be up here. And um, then you'll see, of course, that the arc sine of this, the opposite over the hypotenuse is R over D. Um, now the question is, what is the, what is the midpoint between this and TP? Um, and I'm going to just say midpoint is equal to TP plus 100, 0 divided by 2. And, and the text will be uh, R. It'll be at midpoint one, and let's see how I want to I want to structure it so it's going to be here. Um, and I guess we'll move it up a little bit. So again, we can say mid one, and then mid two plus six. Let's see what that does. 
Ah, uh, god damn it. And there's always this, if you leave a leading comma, it's going to complain at you. It doesn't hurt anything, but it just complains at you and I don't. Like that, uh, there's probably a way to create like a null element at the very end or something where you can just not have to deal with it. Okay, I think I want R to be a little bit higher now. Um, and maybe a little bit to the left. But let's, let's see if just moving it to the left will be enough, because that should... Um, actually, that will make things worse, but let's do it anyway. Yeah, let's... So we want to move it up, but not to the right. Let's just move it up by 10. That's good enough. Okay, um, so there we have uh, the, the reason that this uh, is actually the arc sine, not the arc tangent. Now, you might wonder, what is the arc tangent of this angle here? Um, and the arc tangent of this angle, of course, is going to be the, the uh, opposite over this adjacent side, which you could compute using, um, uh, using the Pythagorean theorem, in fact. Um, and, I mean, it's just going to show you that there's a relationship between the arc tangent and the arc sine. Okay, so that was the first part of our proof, is to say that the uh, angular width is not arctangent, but the angular width, and we're going to go ahead and write that down as a formula, and actually I should mean angular radius. Um, if the, the radius is r and the distance is d, it's going to be arc sine of r over d, because the d is actually the hypotenuse, and this does fix a problem we had earlier. Okay, let's go back to our agenda here. Uh, the minute you get stuff not working, we'll maybe look at it again. Okay, now we're going to actually go for a, a different approach than we did last time. Instead of looking at the umbral cone, we're just going to look at... Um, we're going to actually write this up a little bit, too. So I'm going to go ahead and write this up a little bit while we do this. Um, we're going to look at the... You know, we're going to be treat the uh, planet that's being eclipsed as the viewing planet. And... And we're going to also, and we're going to look at uh, the two other objects uh, as though they are, uh, you know, we're going to look at the angular separation between them and also the angular uh, radiuses. And obviously we're looking for um, where the angular radiuses are big enough uh, that they're bigger than the angular separation, so we have an eclipse. Now, I forgot what I decided to name these things. Um, so let me go ahead and go to the other thing that I had here. Clips portions. So a totally different approach here. Um, oh, that wasn't actually even close to what I wanted. Okay. Um, I guess it was in playground.mathics, which it really doesn't need to be anymore, but anyway. Okay, so we had S, T, and Q. S being the light, obser the light body. T being the eclipsing body and Q being the eclipsed body. Okay, let, and we'll just write this up as let S, T, and Q be any three uh, objects, spherical objects in space, such that um, S emits light, um, T does not emit light, and Q um, and S is potentially eclipsed by Q nope. on Q by T. So that's pretty generic. Now what we're going to say here is um, since S, T, and Q since this, I'm going to be a little bit more precise here but it's really the same thing. Um, since the centers of S, T, and Q are three points, they necessarily form a plane. Unless they're collinear, which we're not going to ignore that case, because that's actually an easier case for us. Um, without loss of generality, and this is the big thing we want to do here, we can um, coordinateify, create coordinates for this system, for this plane by choosing Q to be at the origin, and let's see, we want the light emitting object. Probably don't really care here, but I'm going to say, because um, S has to be further away, and S to be on the x-axis. 
And that's really all I want to do is establish that we can have, um, you know, S and T be on the, uh, on the x-axis. So we're going to go ahead and draw that out a little bit. Sorry, we can have Q be the origin, S be on the x-axis, and then T will just sort of be wherever it needs to be. So let's go ahead and get a nice little diagram for this, which we'll call G6. And we're first going to do it just literally with just points. And I think at this point I'm going to decide that uh, the blue is the Earth is the eclipse, the object being eclipsed. Um, uh, the um, object, I think I decided um, yellow was too, too, I think we made the sun orange, I guess we're going to make it orange. Um, we might have to revisit that decision. That's going to be the uh, the sun and we're choos choosing that to be on the x-axis and we will go ahead and use nice big numbers here because we do want to pr probably use some text here later. And then um, the only remaining object, which what color do I make? Red, red, yeah, we'll make the, uh, the moon red, why not? Ooh, it's only a paper sky. Is there a song called Purple Moon? Because we can make the moon purple and make a reference. But for right now I think we'll stick with the red. Oh, and I think we said the Earth is going to be light blue or something. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll we're, we're using a white background, so let's see what this does. Okay, and the red is the red is going to be the one that's sort of in the um, uh, S to be on the x-axis and T to be in the upper half plane. Uh, it's not really a huge deal. We don't need to look below the uh, the x-axis. Uh, and for right now, we're, since we're thinking of them as being fairly close together. Um, I'm going to make orange far away because it's the further object. Uh, let's just choose, um, excuse me, um, let's just see what that does. And then uh, this, I won't even bother with the plot range. Let's see what this does. That's technically correct. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, we will go ahead and label these, and then I'm going to draw lines between them so we can measure the angles. And I will go ahead and use arrows this time, which I kind of kind of like the arrows. And remember, we're thinking of the cases where the two angles are going to be similar, so we don't have to worry too much about, uh, you know, what if uh, the red dot were way over there or something. That's not a huge deal. So text... Um, Q, uh, text, S, the light emitting object, and then text, T, the thing that is doing the eclipsing. And Dollar to Donut says this is not going to look right because, of course, we have, uh, yeah, that going on for us. So I think for um, Q and S, we could move these points uh, below the two numbers by our padding of 6. And I'm tempted to just say 6, but I'm not going to. So it's going to be 0 minus 6 here. It's going to be 200 minus 6 here. And for this one, I think uh, we can move it to the right by 6. So that'll be 100 plus 106. Let's see what that does. Yeah, and I'm going to move T a little bit to the right, e as Q a little bit to the right, uh, even though I could in theory, well, you know what, I might actually have to use the plot range anyway, because um, because, let's see, so the plot range is going to be minus 6 to, um, yeah, we're going to have to change the plot range once we make these circles, but that's, we're not doing that right now, so, to 200, and in the y direction we have to go from, uh, probably, because we're going down here, negative 6, to whatever we set orange at, which was like 56, I think. This probably is not going to matter that I ha I'm off by a little bit on this, uh, because the important thing is that we have this, this diagram. Uh, that looks okay, which it already does. Uh, okay, I need to go a little bit further down if I want to have... Or I could move O and S to the left and right. Um, 
Although that'll mean extending the, the border in another direction. Let's go ahead and make that lower. This T could be a little bit higher up. Um, let's make the plot range go a little bit. Let's do that. And gorgeous. Okay. So now we're going to measure the angular. We're not going to measure. We're going to point out what the angular distance is between the two. Um, and then we're probably going to make a different diagram to turn these on to circles, into, into spheres. So now let's go ahead and do a... Um, I think our, our all of our arrows can be black. So we'll just say arrow from 0, 0 to 200, 0. And then an arrow from also from zero zero. If I can do this correctly, and in this case it'll go to uh, one hundred comma fifty. Okay, and we might need to tweak the arrow sizes and stuff. But let's see what this does. I like that actually. It's pretty good. So this is the angle we're talking about here, the TQS angle. That's the angular separation between the two. And this is great if everything were a point, but of course it's not. And the hardest thing to become not a point will be Q. Uh, TNS will actually be fairly easy because we already know the formula for the angular radius of each. I'm going to leave G6 the way it is because I, I kind of like this. We're now going to go in and create G7, which is going to be the same thing, but this time... Uh, with uh, with uh, spheres instead of dots. Well, we're going we're gonna to keep the dots, but we're also going to go ahead and put little spheres around them. Um, so we might as well make this um, circle uh, zero zero. Let me see what our scale looks like here. So we want to make like maybe a circle of, of ten. Ten might be too small. Twenty. We'll do twenty-five and see how that goes. And I just want to see what it looks like for this one. Um, I think I can actually make that a little bit smaller. Um, so I'm not sure if I want to, though, because we do want we do want to we will need to do um, we will need to look at angles from Q to see where on the sphere things are going to be. Um, so I guess that's probably okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. Um, and then I'm going to kind of reflect that the S being the sun. You know, not really the sun, but we were like thinking of it as the sun. Uh, it's going to be a little bit bigger, so we're going to make that um, 75, I think. We're going to mess. We're going to have to mess with these numbers. I don't think we're going to get them right the first time. And this being the eclipsing thing, um, can be actually fairly small. On the printer, doesn't really matter because our our calculations are fully generic. Um, and I guess I want to make this one. Let's try 10. That's going to be way too small, though. All right, and of course we need to adjust the plot range just to, to deal with this, but first let's see what we're doing here. Okay, um, yeah, so I think I want T to be bigger and S to be smaller, so I'm going to, and this means we can probably bump this up to like 35, this up to like 25, and this down to 55, and we're not going to cruft too much, we just need to kind of get a sort of a, hmm, I don't know. Let's see. Um, this actually might be okay uh, because we I mean, we're just going to actually sort of manually compute where the you know we we know what the angular diameters are going to be here, so that's not a huge deal. Um, okay, let's go ahead and move the uh, the uh, the the x and uh, the x and the y plot ranges a little bit further out as we need to. So for x, we're going as far uh, west as uh, minus 35. I'll give it minus 40. Uh, with the 200, we're going out for a uh, radius of 2055. We'll say 260. Uh, we're going from 0 down to... I guess it's going to be the sun that's going to do this. Minus 55, so we'll say minus 60. And the one sucker that's up at uh, red point at 50. We're giving it 25, so we'll say 80. So if this is good, this might actually be just exactly what we need. 
that is not bad at all. Okay, so um, we sort of already know what the angular diameters of these things are going to be as viewed from Q. In fact, we even have a formula for angular radius. So now the question is, um, we need the angular separation and we want to subtract off the angular radii because that's going to give us sort of the edge to edge distance. Um, and again, it doesn't really look quite right, but that's because we're um, hmm, almost wondering if we should draw the, uh, the two angles between the edges. But I think we don't need to do that. I think we can be pretty confident that if this is a radius, we know the angle to the edge and the angle to the edge here, and we subtract them, we will have the angle between the two disks. Uh, and if they overlap, that, uh, that angle can actually be negative, which is, which is good, because that's what we're looking for. The biggest issue we're going to have now is, instead of viewing from Q, we're going to be viewing somewhere on the surface of Q. Uh, and since we're in a flat plane, uh, that's going to be represented by an angle, which I really don't want to call theta, but I'm going to call theta anyway. Um, so I'm going to draw a line somewhere here uh, and call it RQ. I mean, sorry, the distance here will be RQ, and the angle here will be theta, but we won't call it that. We'll, and we're going to say this is where the actual observation is occurring. And I think this can be the, the purple point, and, um, and then, we'll, we'll, then, we'll, then we'll look to see what, the, what it looks like, the, the angles look like from here to TNS. So let's go ahead and do that. And we will make this in purple. You knew it'd get purple in there somewhere. So this point we're going to say is um, cosine theta, sine theta. This lets me change it quickly if I want to. I'm going to set theta equal to, um, I'm going to say 40 degrees, we, but I reserve the right to change that. Um, so we have a point there. Um, and actually, I should probably just say here, surface point equals cosine, make the list, theta, sine theta, which will actually mean I probably didn't need to define theta. But anyway, and so I can then just say point here is the surface point. And let's see how that does before we continue any further. Uh, and, of course, I meant to say the radius of the Earth times the radius of our planet, which is um, 35 times that, because it has to be a point on the surface of the, th of the thing. Yeah, not crazy, but then I'm going to move it up to, I think, maybe um, 60 degrees. We want to just keep it sort of... Uh, I'll say 50 degrees. 50 degrees. Uh, I'll, I will make it 60 degrees. Okay, and then we need to still draw in purple uh, the line from the center of the planet, which is uh, zero, 0, to the point. And then we're going to draw arrows from to the centers of the other two points. This is going to be the angular separation as viewed from this planet, as viewed from the surface point instead of in sort of the center of the planet. And we're all coming, we're hopefully coming to something uh, uh, that we're going to do with this. Uh, 200, 0, and another arrow from to uh, wherever the hell we're keeping T, which is 100, 50. Again, I don't know if this is going to work right away. We might have arrow collision, but I'm probably okay with that. Or we're going to have something that doesn't work at all. So what have I done wrong here? Line zero zero SP. Did for lines? Do I need to have? Um, yes, I do. And can I make this an arrow? I probably. Yeah. I'll nah, I don't need to make this an arrow. Yeah, but I do need to make these in extra little curly braces. Because uh, it takes only one argument that happens to be a list of two arguments, instead of taking two arguments, which is different. Um, alrighty, still not working, purple, point SBT, line, wow, like, wait, 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 okay, that's fine, 
SPT, comma 200, comma 0. Uh, okay, I think that's good. Yeah, that looks terrible. Um, so my goal was to show that the angles look very different. Um, so I'm wondering if I put the point down here, I'm still going to get a degree of crossing, but a lot less. So let's go ahead and make this uh, negative 60 degrees. Although technically that's not going to matter, but actually it might. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Um, yeah. Not a lot better, mind you. And I think I could probably change this, do something with this, like make that black, well, a different color, and maybe set these arrows back a little bit. So, um, and I don't know if I want to set the black arrows back a little bit, but okay. Um, well we did figure out how to do that yesterday. Uh, with arrowheads, and arrowheads, uh, uh, size and position. So let's see if we can do that for these. Um, arrowheads. We'll say 0.03 for size, and we'll say 0.75 for um, where on the arrowhead to do it. We'll need to fix it for here. Um, well, right now we'll keep it this way, and then we'll we'll fix it in just a sec. Let's do what this does. Just not getting a break today. Is it? Did I spell arrowheads incorrectly? Yep, I did. Arrowheads is, is um, there's no there's no capital H there. Alrighty, let's see what this does. Apparently, I set my arrowhead size to be insanely big. Wait. Let's see what the definition is here again. Hmm. So size and position, what is wrong with this? Unless I flipped size and position or something. But I mean, this should be okay here unless something's going on with the plot range. Those are some big-ass arrowheads. Shrink them by a tenth. And then begin to wonder if something more sinister is going on here. Um, apparently, yes. Apparently, whatever the hell I'm doing, no matter how small I make these arrowheads... Well, let's also make this number small. Maybe, I, maybe I've mixed up the two numbers or something. Although I don't think I have, actually. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I'm stumped. Let me make these a little bit bigger and see what happens. I'm just sort of doing graphic design, which kind of bugs me. Um, didn't really seem to do anything. Um, so let's go ahead and move these to like 0.75. Uh, not what I wanted. Let's move these to 0.50. Okay, so it looks like for some, for some reason the second argument has become the size, which is not correct. But, um, hey. At least, let's see if we can get this kind of working. Yeah. 
So whatever the hell's wrong with the arrowheads here, we're probably not going to fix. Um, so let's go ahead and not even try to fix that. And let's go ahead and make this line from Q to um, to the to the um, to the surface. Um, let's go ahead and make that blue. And we will not make it uh, purple. And that's probably the most we're going to do in terms of diagramming, because it's we're really not looking for. Um, so, so the thing we're looking for is the distance. This is one angle here. This is a different angle here. The angular radius radii will be different as well, but but we're, we'll get to all that. Okay. So now what we want to say is, um, if you're on the surface, what is your what are your distances and and angular radii and angular separation going to look like? Um, I wonder if there's like a really cool mathematical formula that connects this to this. Um, knowing this angle here. And I bet you there is. We're not going to look for it, but I bet you there is. Okay. So now we're going to do some math. Uh, let's see if there's anyone watching here. Which every so often like to check. Uh, only Commander Root, who I believe is either evil or irrelevant. Perhaps both. Um, Alright, so now let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and say what, uh, if you're on the point theta on the surface, meaning if you're, you know, this angle here between the QS and here is, is theta, uh, what is your, uh, what are your um, angular separation and angular uh, width uh, radius is going to look like? Well, the angular separation, um, is going to be, let's see, ta -ta 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 -ta. I wanna, I'm trying to remember what we know. We know this angle, this angle here. Um, we, we, I guess we do know the positions of T and S, sort of, because we know this angle. We know sort of where S and T are. Um, so this is going to be, uh, the angular separation is going to be the vector from here to here, dot product of the vector from here to here, over the product of the norms of the vectors arc cosine. I don't know if there's an easier way to get that. I was kind of hoping, there uh, so over, over the cosine, rather. That'll be, the, yeah, the arc cosine of all that, since that'll just be the cosine. Um, I was actually hoping it'd be easier than that, um, but maybe not. So, um, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, this will be Tx, Ty, or whatever, Sx, Xy. Uh, this, we know Q is going leave, to leave it at zero, zero, so that's okay. What we're really looking for is where on the surface will this angle minus the two angular radii become the smallest possible, because that's the point of the maximum eclipse. That's our goal here. Uh, and uh, and we're going to find it by basically uh, looking at different values of theta, taking the derivative, setting it equal to zero, or finding critical points in some other way without hopefully not getting critical points that are that are stupid. By which I mean critical points that are like, I mean the critical points over here yeah, the angle may be really small, but you can't actually see the eclipse from here. It has to be something that's within the skim distance, you know, that's where both of these things would be visible on Q. We're not going to worry about that for right now, but that will become an issue in, in, in a moment. Okay, so let's say this angular separation at theta is going to be, um, so is going to be, so this point here at theta, let's actually ta talk about that. The point at theta is going to be qr times cosine theta qr. That's just the standard conversion from uh, polar to uh, from s uh, yeah from polar to spherical coordinates, polar to Cartesian coordinates. I mean, point theta. The angular separation is going to be um, t minus um, t x t y minus this. Sx and the dot product. Okay, so this is going to be Tx minus point theta. Um, Tx, Ty rather, minus point theta. And it's going to be the dot product of that with uh, 
Actually, let me make this a little bit simpler. Um, a vector t, the vector to t at theta is going to be, and this is just because I'm being lazy, tx, ty minus point theta, the vector to s, uh, theta is going to be sx, sy minus point theta. Um, we may as well do the angular ang rad of t at theta is going to be equal to so the angular radius uh, if you're here at, at angle theta is going to be the arc side of the radius which doesn't change tr over the distance so that's going to be the arc sine of tr over the distance between over the norm effectively of vec2 uh, t theta so that's what that's going to be the distance there and of course the ang rat to s is going to be sr which doesn't change over the this vec2 s theta um, the angular separation of theta. All oh right, and the angular separation is here is going to be basically a uh, vector. I think there is a vector angle function, um, which oh, I keep forgetting. Um, there is a vector angle function, and so we just want the vector angle between vec two t theta back to s theta and if that doesn't work we can always use the dot product and divide by the product of the norms which I think is what vector angle does I'm going to mute the stream for just a second to take care of some uh, some illness based business Okay, and we're back, hopefully. All right, so now let's go ahead and load this into Mathix command line, since it's going to be a lot easier that way. Um, and I think that's Mathix minus minus, okay, Mathix minus minus persist till the BC. Why am I in La Paz shared? Oh, that's the name of the machine, never mind. Uh, tilde BC git Mathix and I think it's going to be our BC eclipse diagram. Hopefully nothing will go wrong. Hopefully. Okay, so now let's look at some of the stuff we've defined. Let's look at point theta. Again, we're just testing all this stuff. Uh-huh, and almost to be like I wish I had not defined theta here. Um, so I'm not going to define theta here. Um, oh, let's see, do I want to call this Tough decision here. I will undefine theta temporarily uh, so we can use it as a generic. Uh, we do have G7 and G6 already going. Uh, we can restore theta if we need to, although this is not the correct way to do things. Yeah, and it's also going to. Alright, screw that. We're going to do this. We're going to call this uh, theta 2 because it's actually going to work better that way. Theta 2, theta 2. Oh, that wasn't actually that bad. Okay, now let's try this. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so let's see where the point theta will be. Just make sure everything looks nice here. It looks good to me. And the vec to t of theta is going to be, looks right, vec to s also looks right. Um, let's see what the angrad t looks like, because that's going to be a little bit clumsier. Um, that might be simplifiable. I don't know for sure. And the angrad s is going to look very similar, except apparently I've got a hard number in there somewhere. 
angrad s is do I have sr defined? What do I have defined that I shouldn't have defined? Okay. I think I do have sr defined here. Yes, I do. Um So here, yeah, here I'm probably actually going to need SR. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, undefine it here. Um, since we're no longer using those diagrams, I'm probably going to get an error now on the things I'm trying to draw, though. It's like a freaking nightmare. Oh, wow. I guess I'm going to try to draw them anymore. Okay, so let's see what we're talking about here. Ang rad s theta. Always good to check there. Looks good. And of course, the most important thing here, of course, is ang sep theta. And that is a pretty nasty looking thing right there. I don't know if it simplifies. Let's see if we can simplify a little bit. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. I don't know if that looks any simpler to me, but uh, anyway, that's what it, that's what it's going to be. Um, and honestly, if we're trying to minimize the arc cosine, we could just as easily minimize uh, the the thing inside the arc cosine because for what we're talking about, um, actually, arc cosine, or negative of it or something. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's it's uh, arc cosine is enough of a monotone function for the regions we're using it in uh, that it shouldn't be a huge deal. Okay, now let's take the derivative. I'm hoping that it understands that means d yang sub theta theta. Gorgeous. Um, why are we getting, oh, we have absolute value derivative, which is actually not a good thing. So, we will probably need to make a substitution that says the square root of the absolute value of something squared is the thing, which is not true, by the way. Um, there's a plus or minus issue there, uh, but I think, because there's no way we're going to be able to set, well, you know, let's try it. Give me the value of theta that makes that zero. No way in hell that's going to be solved, I think. Yeah, no, it's not going to solve. That's way too complicated. Okay, so the angular separation of theta. Now, here's where we get sort of wonky. I don't know if this is going to work. It works in Mathematica, but, you know, whatever. Um, the square root of the absolute value of anything... The square root absolute value... Oh wow, absolute value of x of anything squared will just go to x. Did that work? I'll be damned. Uh, I'm actually am damned. Hang on, that's that's pretty amazing. So again, this is not a correct. This is not always correct. Square root of the absolute value of x squared is not always x, but it should be good enough for us. And that's an important enough formula. We're going to call this um, angsep two, and that just means we're you know we're going to sort of re refine our formula. Um, so like that, okay. So and we'll do that here too, of course. Angsep two of theta equals this. Okay, so that might be actually easier to get a derivative out of. Again, this means the derivative of angsep two of theta with respect to theta. Okay, uh, interesting. Let's solve this equal to zero for theta. I don't think this is going to be able to do that. We now pause for station identification. You're not watching a station. Okay, I'm sort of curious to see if Mathics can spit out the answer to this. Um, 
fairly hideous looking thing. You'll notice, by the way, that um, uh, we have uh, the uh, from the square roots we have the three halves coming in, powers of three halves showing up in the uh, in the derivative. So let's give this a little bit more time, and then we'll decide that it's not going to solve it, and we're going to look at some we're going to look at some other stuff real quick. Um, Yeah, let's crank in this thing. Let's crank in some CPUs here. And it's quite possible that a lot of some of this is a, a like a denominator or something. In which case, obviously, for the whole thing to be zero, the denominator uh, can just pretty much be ignored unless it happens to be zero. So this might simplify more than I think it does. Uh, if it doesn't, I do have some plans to look at it in a different way. Um, yeah, we'll give it another 30 seconds maybe, and then we'll call it. Um, although again, if this is actually a pretty uh, beefy calculation we're doing here, and it will be impressive if, uh, if MathX manages to, to pull it off. Um, in another 12 seconds. It will not be impressive after 12 seconds. Okay, we're coming up on about three seconds now. And let me check the users in chat, because I'm just paranoid. Nope, nobody still. And I think we're done. Okay, so that's not going to do this. It's fine. Um, several ways we can look at this now. We could actually try to look at the, uh, the formula. Um, and it'll look nicer if we just say it here, angcept 2 prime of theta, and reload it into, um, into here. Because this will display the formula nicely as opposed to... Um, well, that's not at all what I wanted. Um, that should be okay, actually. Let's try print, but I mean, it's kind of strange. Usually it prints the last thing. Zero. It's a little dot in front of it. Um, all right, hang on. I might have screwed this up somehow. Yeah, that looks okay. Takes a while, but it looks okay. Okay. So that's not that's not going too great there. Um, and I'm not sure why we're not getting a printout here. That is that's a little bit strange. It's almost like it's saying zero is the value, uh, but it's that's not true. Hmm. Well, all right. Let's take a look at angle step two of theta. And the only thing I can think of here is that maybe I need to reload to get rid of the value of theta. And I do. So let me go ahead and do a shift reload, which I don't like doing. Oh, I think it might be this session ID here that's screwing us up. So we're just going to do this, this, and yay, we have a new, uh, I have to type in this again, but you know. We have a new fresh install BC Eclipse diagram dot mathix theta. All right. Why or oh why do you think theta is 60? Because I do not actually set it. All right. So what we're going to do here is a little bit of a A little bit of a hack that I was hoping to avoid. I think we can just say unset theta here. And then theta should be just theta. So now when I do this, it will hang forever. And that's okay. It'll take a little bit of time to get this anyway. Burning CPU here. I don't know if you can hear it, but the... Uh, Really cranking away at the CPU here. All right, one more time here. Shift, Enter. Taking its time. 
And again, I think that's because I have R set, SR set. So let's do that. That should not take it any time at all. That's a very strange thing to um, be hanging on. Okay. All right. Well, let's do this again. And this isn't looking quite as good as I thought it would look. I thought it was going to look a little bit better than this. Now, hopefully, I've gotten rid of all the solid values in here, and we can uh, we can look at this. We can look at the uh, the derivative here. Do I have something else set here? Hang on. Do I have QR set? Maybe. Yep. I'm kind of wondering why I don't have QR set here. Oh right, because I, I unset a whole bunch of stuff, but it didn't actually didn't actually take. Okay, one more time. And by the way, unset is an ugly way to also reuse variables. And I'm actually tempted to kind of use it because it's a lot easier than having to uh, rename variables. And there we have it. Uh, I think this is now free of any, of any hard values. This is, I think that's the derivative. Yeah, it is. The deriv derivative of except 2. Uh, looks hideous. Looks hideous. Um, I certainly don't know. Um, I certainly don't know uh, what this means. Um, wow. I don't even know if we can multiply it by something to make it look nicer. Um, but we're going to do something else now. We're going to um, we're going to actually um, we're actually going to compute the angle separation of theta, um, or actually, I guess, well, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be using hard numbers. So we're going to say angcept theta, yeah, let's go over here, angcept of theta, and in order to do this, we're going to have to give some numbers here. We're going to say um, qr, I think we actually had some numbers up here. Now, this is, of course, going to be very um, specific to uh, to the, to our, de to our line here. So a qr, I said, we think we said it's going to be 35. Um, SX we said was going to be. Yeah, it's going to be fun jumping between these two. 200. Um, TX we said was going to be. Um, what do we say TX was going to be? Okay. All right, I think I just figured something out, actually. Um, so mostly we're OK here. Um, point theta is equal to this, qr times vector 2 to t. Um, yeah, we lost our sort of nice diagram here. So um, vector 2 to t, tx minus ty, which is, I think, correct. Let's take a look here. Yeah, those are two numbers we don't control. Um, SX, I think we decided is going to be zero because we've decided to put it on the, sorry, SY is going to be zero because we've decided to put it on the x-axis. Um, TR over norm, uh, yeah, that's not, we can't do anything about that, can't do anything about that. The angle separation, okay, so the, with the exception of SX zero uh, being zero, and we've already assumed that QX uh, and QY are zero, um, QR, we don't have, it, well, we have a value for it. We don't have an assumption for it, though. So let's see if this helps any. And I, uh, with all, with all due hope, I don't think it actually will help any. Uh, 
because we just basically changed one number to zero, and I don't think that's gonna that's gonna do much. So the angular separation at theta is equal to this, and the angular separation two, which is a little bit simpler, is equal to this, and its derivative with respect to theta is equal to it's gonna be ugly, and we want to solve that equal to zero for theta, and that is going to be too ugly. It's not going to work. Um, but we can do this. We can look at the um, angular separation, and it doesn't really matter if it's 2 or not, because we're going to use real numbers here. Theta. Given that, and let's take a quick look here. Given that um, QR is, so we're just going to sort of use the values we had up here. Given that QR goes to um, I think we said our planet's yeah 35. Um, we're jumping between these two directly. QR 35, TY is um, in this case we decided it's going to be 100. I think uh, you know 50. TY is 50. TX goes to 100. Um, SX, which we're not using, um, no SX goes to. Um, 200 SY we're not defining. So let's see what that is. Um, and I believe that is a function that is purely in theta. Um, that we don't have any other uh, variables here. Okay, and so what, what is that? What is the usefulness of that? Well, now we can call this, uh, we'll just use a random name, t1972 of t of theta is equal to this. And then the coup de gras of theta as theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. So now we can see what the, um, what the, uh, what the separation actually looks like. And that was sort of the goal here is to, uh, to sort of get an idea of how the angular separation changes as you move around the planet. And clearly, that is stupid. How is that even possible? Um, angular separation of theta, given that, well, let's take a, well, let's actually just do something over here. Let's see what the um, ang sep of theta, sorry, the T1907 of theta is. Okay. Those are some really strange looking numbers there. Um Yeah, something's wrong here. We should not be having fiftieth powers. Alright, so let's just take a look at the ang sep of theta and see what the heck happened. Um And we said QR, TY, TX, SX, these should not be, these should not be issues. But let's take a look here. Oh, doesn't like that. Try it again. Escape W for the uh, for the weird Emacs. Um. So let's see what that is, and that is for some reason that. Um, and let's go ahead and make this thing up here just ang sep of theta. Or ang set of theta, which is even easier because it's not defined. Ang sep of theta. Okay. So minus 35, blah, blah, blah. Minus 2 plus 3. Yes, I am, I am, I am confuzzled here. Uh, I don't know how we get these huge numbers in here. I don't think they should be there. Um, so why don't we just do it one step at a time? 
So all right, we'll just set QR to 35 first and see what happens. Nothing hideous should happen. So far, so good. Then we're going to set TY to 50. Again, that should not cause any great problems. Um, hmm. Should it bother me that TY doesn't occur anywhere within this co computation? And that... Um, this number is not dependent on anything but theta? Yes, it should bother me. All right, um, so the vector to th theta is going to be mm, there's got to be something going on here. Vector to 2. Okay, something's wrong. Because um, SX is not mentioned anywhere here. Now the only thing I'm thinking is, did I define SX by mistake? Yes, I did. Alright, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do a very nice little... Um, I have no idea where I defined SX, but... We're going to do... I don't know, let me see if unset works with more than one variable. Uh, SX equals 7, SY equals 25, uh, SX, SY, unset. SX. Nope, it doesn't. we got to do it one, one at a time. Okay. So, despite my desire not to want to do this, we will have to do this. Unset. I'll just do a whole bunch of them. Unset QR theta SX. There is no SY. Um, is there an SR? No. I g oh, yeah, there is. SR TX TY TR. Uh, mm, already on set theta SX SX SY. And SY doesn't exist because we've made it zero. Um, Okay, I'm gonna think. I'm gonna hope that's enough. But let's see what happens here. Dun 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 dun. It's the Tiny Tunes theme. Let's see what's going on here. Wow. That's what I wanted. That's something that actually looks like what I wanted. Okay, fantastic. Um. So what this tells us is the angular separation kind of reaches a minimum here at about two radians only in this uh, in this very specific looking uh, diagram in this very that we've lost but we had at one point um, which we might actually want to bring up in another window so we can refer to it um, let's see so two and this isn't tremendously useful because um, it's really best for us if we looked at it in terms of degrees. And T1907 is an angular separation, so we want it in degrees as well. So let's, let's do this. Uh, hopefully that'll work. Shouldn't really be taking this long, but I think a lot of the graphic stuff is uh, is taking it a while, which I probably could comment out. Dun, 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 dun. Same graph, different axes, if it works. Okay. Um, the center is not zero zero, but the the, the angular separation gets down to fairly low between 100 and 150 and uh, degrees and um, that's actually sort of interesting because that means the the angular separation is okay good and I guess the other two things we really want to know about are the angular radiuses radii as measured from uh, these 
Now in theory, I can plot all three of them at once. Don't know if I really want to do that though. <sighs> Let's see. Hey! Oh, hello! Thank you very much. I hello, B Stone. This is B Stone 2019. A wonderful person. Uh, you should go watch her. I think I host her sometimes. Uh, and she just let me know that she's hosting me. I feel sorry for all your viewers, but uh, but uh, but hello to all your viewers. Uh, and thank you very much, B-Stone. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, if any of your viewers have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, we are right now looking at this, um, uh, something that's so weird I really would have difficulty explaining it. Uh, but thank you. Okay, and now let's go ahead and go back to our, so this is, this is kind of interesting. Um, not really what I hoped for, actually. Not not the hosting, the the graph. Um, let's take a quick look to see what our in this situation what our what our angle to t is. The vec to s. T yeah, actually, let's let's do that real quick here. Let's go ahead and uh, reload. And then we want to look at our. Um, to TS. I want to see if there's any sort of relation between uh, where the two uh, the two bodies are compared to this number that we're getting out of. Uh, oh, hello. Here we are. I can't stay. Just wanted to stop by. Okay. Thank you very much, Beastone 2019. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So the vector T. Um, oh, hang on. Do I mean vector T of theta? Wait. Oh, actually, I want the vector t of. Uh, I want to know where t is actually, which is uh, t x t y, which we have decided will be one hundred, comma fifty, and that angle will be um, uh, fifty over a hundred. So that angle is about twenty six degrees. Now we know that. The S is at pretty much zero degrees. Apparently, the smallest. Um, yeah, I'm not getting too clear a picture of how this is going to look. Um, well the smallest angle is apparently going to occur when you're too far away for it to be useful. Uh, but as you go down from zero, this is a pretty solid drop here. Um, So from zero to, and actually the highest value occurs just below the, uh, the highest separation occurs just below the, uh, just before you hit the parallel line. All right, let me go ahead and bring up, uh, we're going to put G7 here. We're going to bring this up and we're going to leave this window open um, because we want to keep our diagram sort of in one place. I kind of wonder what this is now. Oh yeah, we do need to return that at some point. Okay, let's see what this does. Pretty sure I hit shift return. Then again, maybe I didn't. Okay, hit shift return. There we go. Um, so the angle theta there is negative 60 degrees. We get our best uh, worst angular separation here. And I guess our best one is over here when they're kind of, kind of between the two, uh, but that's not helpful because it's too far away from. Uh, I mean, T is only going to be visible for, you know, only going to be visible on like half the planet anyway. So the question is, um, and I don't know the answer to this. Um, Can we can we figure out where the value is going to be the the least, and and do something with it? And like I said, honestly, I don't I don't know. And let's go ahead and go to localhost eighty eighty eight thousand. Okay. And here we're going to. Um, um, Let's also go ahead and plot the angular radius of, um, let's go ahead and call these params so we can come up with them really quickly if we need to. We can change them real quickly if we need to. 
So we'll say this is params, and here we're going to say um, plot the angular radius of t in degrees. Um, given I don't know if that's going to actually work, but let's see what that does. Times like this, I wish we could do a little bit more with the, the command line version. what this does. Okay, we're waiting. And we're probably going to need to drop some of the stuff to make life easier. And that did not look good at all. That's not um, uh, angrad degree given params. Let's see what that does on the um, on the command line side once we reload. And it might be that I'm overdoing. The, I need to sort of separate the uh, replacement step into two steps. But let's take a look. Definitely need to uh, trim this down a little bit. And we might trim it down into um, a diagram and a, uh, and a mathematical section uh, that are separate. And here we have, oh, 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 TR is not being set properly. What went wrong? So we decided TR was going to be, oh, wow, I don't think I set TR anywhere in here. Um, TR was going to be for this. Uh, 25. Let's go ahead and add that to our params. Let's take a look. And if we get anything. Except a long wait, which is always kind of a nice thing to have. If you're a longshoreman, a long wait is approximately uh, 2,200 pounds or one metric ton. And I guess if you're a short shoreman, that would work too. And I certainly hope I get a result before I run out of jokes. Or actually, you should hope that we get a result before I run out of jokes. Okay, okay, I'm going to go hit shift return again. But I already did. Okay, we're getting nothing out of this. Okay, so we have done a little bit of what we wanted to do. We've used a new model to, de to determine um, to determine where we can find the uh, the minimal uh, angular distance and the maximal, or you know, the sort of combination with the uh, with the uh, angular diameters or angular radiuses uh, that we're looking for. Uh, we haven't solved the problem. Oh, here we go. Okay. So once again, it looks like. Um, the minimal angular radius that uh, T gives us is at 200 degrees. Uh, let's take a look here. And again, that's not su that's from right, right here, which actually sort of makes sense. It's going to be sort of the opposite of where you're furthest away from the center of T. And I'm guessing for S it would be over here when you're furthest away from S. And that actually probably makes a lot of sense. Um, but of course, we're looking for a combination of the t angular separation and the angular diameter. So, so it's going to be a little bit more complicated than that. Um, and I think we're going to look at that next time. I don't know if Mathix is powerful enough to solve this. I think maybe Mathematica might be. We can also look at Wolfram Alpha, though I doubt, uh, and Wolfram Cloud, since we have the problem set up. Um, Wolfram Alpha, I'm not sure we'll deal with it. Wolfram, uh, I mean, Wolfram Cloud might actually deal with it. Uh, but we can get it all set up in Mathix ahead of time. 
And so we have been now streaming for, I have no idea how long. No, we have been streaming for one hour, 45 minutes, which I think is more than enough. So thank you for watching and talk to you next time.